Need a presenter? Your event audio has you covered. Closed circuit audio equipment with turnkey operation at your trade show booth, live event, or private event. YourEventAudio.com is the place to go. DJ services, MC talent, and a whole lot more. Check out YourEventAudio.com today. Craving ideas to ignite your face-to-face -face marketing program? Join us at Exhibitor Live, the conference and exhibition for trade show and corporate event marketers in Nashville, February the 25th through the 28th. Dive into over 100 electrifying sessions and workshops led by industry rock stars, where you'll learn to skyrocket your ROI, master the art of creating experiences, and forge connections that will take your program and your career to the next level. Secure your spot now and turn your trade show dreams into reality at ExhibitorLive.com. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Exhibitor Now for February the 2nd, 2024. That's right. We are in the official month for Exhibitor Live. It is right here on us, just a few weeks away, and we've got some exciting content and interviews that we're going to be having over the next three weeks as we lead up to Nashville, Tennessee at the resort of known as Opryland. Everybody loves Opryland. If you've never been, uh, I'm sure you've heard of it, and if you are going, you're going to be excited and, and overwhelmed with all the great things that are coming for Exhibitor Live 2024. I'm Mike Morris and National Sales Director for WS Display and your co-host for the show. As you can see on the screen, Mark Johnson joins me now, the owner of Exhibitor Group. And each week we talk about all the headlines and things that are applicable to our industry, whether direct or indirect. And we've got a few to talk about today. But Mark, for the first time in a while, I can actually sit here, look out my window, see sunshine and, and 60 degree temperatures, oddly enough, in February. Uh, so that must mean that things and weather in Vegas are just absolutely great. You know, the last couple of days have been fabulous here. Um, and I actually played a little hooky yesterday afternoon and got a round of golf in at the Las Vegas Country Club. We're officially closed at the club now for the next two and a half weeks. Uh, as they get ready for, and then the dismantlement of the LIV tour is going to be played there uh, 8, 9, and 10, Thursday, Friday, Saturday of Super Bowl. The town is abuzz with the Super Bowl activity going on, too. Uh, I'm hearing more and more results from Formula One and some of the data that's coming from that, so we can talk about that, too. But actually, today in Vegas, uh, we actually have rain. It's gray and rain today, and I think the high is going to be in the mid-60s. Uh, and unfortunately, next week for the LIV tour and the guys coming up from uh, Mexico is where they're playing their tournament now. Uh, they're going to have a little cold weather. It looks like it's going to be in the 50s and cool and a chance of rain even for that tournament. So uncharacteristic unchar Las Vegas weather. Uh, but you know what? And I should say it's better than Minnesota, but Minnesota's uh, we're in the 40s and no snow back in Minneapolis. So we've been avoided a lot of the winter there as some of the East Coast has really been pounded, but it's the way it is. Weather is interesting this time of year, or this year, I, know I we, say. We start off every show talking about weather like two old guys that sit here. You got nothing yeah. else better to talk about except the weather, right? Now, we got things to talk about, so let's dive into one big announcement that came out this week. The official announcement came out that the 2024 version of Legislative Action Day has been scheduled. It's for Thursday, May the 30th. You may have seen the announcement. Once again, Legislative Action Day will bring industry leaders and advocates from across the business events ecosystem to Capitol Hill in D.C. to meet with policymakers about ECA's top federal policy priorities. As we know, Mark, Legislative Action Day is free to participate, but they do accept donations on behalf of uh, ECA for advocacy work. But with this year being an election year, and probably, the, as you and I were talking off mic, probably the most whacked out election year, for lack of better words I can come up with, of all the activity that's going to be surrounding D.C., it'll be interesting this year to be there in May to discuss our efforts and what we're trying to do through ECA. Yeah, and this is a great uh, initiative. Uh, it was uh, unofficial, unorganized for many, many years, and there was still some great progress. But what Tommy's done and has really organized it the last couple of years, it was great to be a part of it. Last year, I think it was one of the best, uh, well organized, and and the conversations we had and the results we're seeing are really um, th there's something we can put our finger on and actually see some results coming out of it. So I'm excited to be a part of it. Yeah, it's a little 
being a little Midwesterner, I, I'd love to avoid Washington this year with all the craziness going on. And we have different points of views, and I think that's great. But we've always in the past been able to figure out a way to come together and agree to disagree at parts and, and find mutual standing grounds and where do you come up with some action. But right now we are so polarized, it doesn't feel like that's capable. But what's uh, even more interesting to me, if you look at world politics, we're not alone. A lot of the whole world and different countries and parts of the world are dealing with the same issues. So I don't know if it's uh, in the air or if it's the pendulum swing and we'll come back to more of a collaborative nature. But definitely we'll be there. Exhibitor is proud to be a sponsor and support uh, Tommy's efforts there. And we look forward to working with everybody and making another successful event. I did chat with Tommy yesterday from ECA, and uh, we will uh, we were going to have a, a, an extra org, uh, podcast with that before the 18th, which is our next uh, association advocacy podcast, where you, Tommy, and I will sit down and talk about things. But we're going to wait until the 18th, and maybe we'll have even more updates about what we can share with Legislative Action Day. Staying on Capitol Hill for just a minute with our second bullet point. The Federal Reserve left interest rates unchanged for a fourth straight meeting this week, and it was kind of expected for some reason. Uh, they indicated that there was no rush to cut them. Uh, the Fed has held its benchmark target rate at a 23-year high of five and a quarter to five and a half percent to fight the hottest inflation that we've seen in decades. So in your mind, Mark, is this a good move or a bad move? You know, I think it totally is what's been expected, as you heard or you talked about going through with that. This week is going to be interesting. There's some of the major corporations that are actually posting their profits and their year end results. Uh, we'll see how it shakes with the stock market. You've got half the group that's still expecting the stock market to completely drop. Uh, and a lot of us are seeing the opposite in our 401ks. And uh, I am the treasurer for the EDPA Foundation. Our uh, holdings have continued to increase uh, just from our investments. Uh, Bill Haney does a great job of overseeing that for us. And so that continues to be there. I think the market's going well. What I'm hearing through uh, some of my advisors, JP Morgan is one of them. They're expecting, you know, when are they looking to drop this? They see in the second half of the year, the interest rates starting to come down. As again, they talked about this soft landing or are we already through the whatever recession there was going to be? Uh, I'm in that camp. I really think that we're going to start to see these things slowly come down in the second half of 24. And then everybody's predicting a good run for the next five you know, plus years. Uh, we've heard that with a lot of economists that we've talked about on the show at the different associations. Uh, I, I'm in that camp. I think it's going to continue to work in that favor and uh, we'll continue to go with it. There's still surprises, you know, different wars pop up, you know, the civil unrest or uh, issues with China right now and trade. Some of those things will affect some of these things uh, as the economy moves forward. But I think we're in the right path and uh, there's nothing more uh, we can see at this time going forward. You're right. And, and you're talking about the international standpoint. Just but once again, back to this year, if the election in the U.S. may play a pivotal role in how business moves forward, how the stock market moves, the Fed, the interest rate, and so forth. So it's it's going to be an interesting 24 for sure. Uh, I hope you're right. I hope we see a little bit of relief in coming down for the sake of the consumer and uh, just everybody's involved in our industry. But it was an interesting announcement that did come out. Now, this last bullet point's a little interesting to me. Um, and we talk about this a lot, and it might be the record playing over and over again, but it was an interesting take on it. Someone told me this week that with Apple's creation of the Vision Pro goggles, you may have seen these. I mean, these are like goggles on steroids. They're huge. They go on your head. They do a lot of things uh, in an AI manner. But someone said that because of that in intervention of this, this invention rather, that it will put a dent in trade shows and live events and face-to-face -face and might put them in danger, quote unquote. Now I shuddered for a moment because that just I wasn't expecting that statement. And but then I realized that people who who think this way are very high-tech minded people who have been thinking this way for a long time. And they wanted to see this implementation of these types of products into the system. And uh, they just may not realize the massive desire that we've talked about over and over on this show, even about the face-to-face -face desire to go face-to-face -face with our events. So that being said, Mark, 
you have to assume that there's a force coming, though, uh, that that basically may try to move that needle a little closer towards more implementation of that type of, of technology. I don't think this one's it. The price tag on it's $3,500, and the reviews that have come out have not been stellar at all. There have been a lot of hiccups. But someone may come up with developments in the future. What are your thoughts on that? You know, I think they're definitely coming up with developments. And I'm with you. I've seen it. I've looked at it. I'm not the, I kind of like being early adapter. And so I had the Google Glass years ago when they first came out and how that was going to change the world. And it really didn't. It isn't to that level. And we talked about that earlier, that Meta has their uh, glasses that are out there with that that are going to be used for different areas and, and you know aspects of it. I think this is going to be utilized. It's actually going to help some of our activations. I think you're going to see some of this being used on the show floor or in the events and some of the things to enhance that experience. But we've talked about it before with AI and some of these things. We're going to create fake news, false areas. You're not going to be able to trust it because of some of the things that are going on with it. And the value of face-to-face -face marketing is going to continue. I don't see it going away like you and I said before. At least in our lifetime, you know, maybe a generation or two down the road, they may really see this is the way to go versus it. But we're still human. We're still pack animals. We want to connect with people. And every event, CES, World of Concrete, the ones, you know, we just had fancy food. The people that are together, it's just amazing to see that uh, involvement with it. Now, again, people are back to putting on whatever head uh, sets and not having a fear for COVID or anything. But uh, I don't see it totally going away. I do remember 10, 15, probably 20 years ago when they first did a virtual exhibit on the internet. And we even at EDPA, it was uh, on the executive committee at the time, had the same thought. Is this going to ruin our industry? Is it going to change everything? It hasn't. You know, it's enhanced it. And there's some tools there that I see a lot of our clients and a lot of people in the industry utilizing. But it sure has not replaced the record attendance that we're seeing at some of these face-to-face -face activities and even outside of it, you know. Coachella, um, South by Southwest, you know, things like that that are still just growing and thriving with it, uh, the concerts and the activations. We could all sit back with these glasses and watch you too, but you wouldn't get the same experience if you came out to Vegas and saw the sphere. Totally different. Absolutely. And, and transitioning that thought into record numbers of events. Exhibitor Live is right here. It's three weeks away. Everybody will be rolling into Nashville around the 24th, 25th of the month and getting ready for the whole week of CTSM certification and recognition and sessions and also two days on the show floor. So to talk about that and the first segment of our Exhibitor Live discussions will be David Dubois. He is, of course, the CEO and president of the Exhibitor Group, publisher of Exhibitor Magazine a good friend of ours, and I uh, had a chance to ch catch up with him this week. Also, Monica Myhill, you'll have an opportunity to meet her. She is the director of the CTSM and education for the exhibitor group and taking on that role from Dee Siffles, who had it for a long period of time with exhibitor group and picking up that ball and running with it uh, full steam ahead is no easy task. So she sat down with us as well. The four of us had an opportunity to catch up and talk about our, like I said, our first session about Exhibitor Live 2024. Let's talk about that after this short break. Attention, trade show and event marketing professionals. Are you ready to take your face-to-face -face marketing expertise to the next level? Join more than 3,000 candidates currently enrolled in Exhibitor Group's Certified Trade Show Marketer Program. CTSM is corporate America's top source of the industry's best trade show and corporate event training. CTSM Certified Trade Show Marketers enjoy expanded career opportunities, greater respect and authority in their organizations, and earn higher salaries than their acronym-free peers. Learn more. Earn more. Visit ctsm.com today. Welcome back to the Exhibitor Now podcast. Three weeks away, folks. Exhibitor Live is right here on us. It's uh, very close and everybody's making their travel plans, getting everything together and ready to head to Nashville, Tennessee, to Opryland Resort and for the 2024 version of Exhibitor Live. So today 
Mark will take some time to speak with our guests. This will be the first of uh, three installments that we'll have in the next few shows uh, to talk about Exhibitor Live and what to expect. And of course, joining us now is David Dubois, the CEO and president of Exhibitor Group, of course, the publisher of Exhibitor Magazine. And for some of you, the first time we've had an opportunity to see and speak with Monica Myhill. She is the Chief Learning Strategist and CTSM Director for the Exhibitor Groups. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, it's a great uh, opportunity here to talk to uh, David and Monica this morning. There's a lot that they've been doing and been very busy behind the scenes and in front of the scenes the last several months as we're getting ready to uh, move to Nashville and do our live event. Uh, but let's start with you, Monica. There's a lot of people that maybe don't have the full background or totally understand or get to know Monica. Give the listeners a little bit of a background. What's your background, your history, your experience, and what brought you to Exhibitor? Well, let me start first with what brought me to Exhibitor. Um, I was contacted by David Dubois back this past fall about an interesting opportunity. And he and I worked together first at Meeting Professionals International, where I was in the professional development division. Um, but since then, um, I have been working in the training and development, conference management, evaluation and certification space. Uh, when I was at MPI, I worked on the one of their certification programs. So I'm excited to be here. That's great. And yeah, I was very impressed with your background and uh, loved it when David introduced us. And it was an opportunity to bring you on the team. Uh, as many people know, the CTSM program has been one of the longtime staples of Exhibitor Group for many years. And as you're taking over that program, it has a tremendous impact in our industry. What are you seeing of some of the main objectives and goals that you have both short term and long term for the program moving forward? Well, let me start by first just saying the CTSM program is very strong with a dedicated community of graduates and faculty, but the current team now wants to build on that success that the previous team had established. So a couple of things that we're hoping to do in the coming year. Um, first is create a CTSM advisory council that will be comprised of both graduates and industry leaders who can provide their insights into what's happening in the trade show and event marketing industries, as well as suggestions on things we could do to improve it. Uh, we're also going to be looking at the candidate journey and collecting more candidate and graduate feedback to figure out the needs, behaviors, and maybe even frustrations of what's been happening with the CTSM program to be able to make those improvements. We definitely want to grow the CTSM community, and we're very excited to report that in 2023, we came very close to beating previous enrollment records for the CTSM program. And I would say this is both due to the efforts of our really strong CTSM team, as well as the influx of new trade show and event marketing professionals in the industry post-COVID. Uh, we also want to we're starting to think about ways to provide candidates the ability to complete their CTSM coursework quicker. This July, we'll be offering a, a week-long fast-track program in Las Vegas, which will enable candidates to complete hopefully 70% of their CTSM coursework while they're there at that program. So we're also looking to provide more online on-demand content through a learning management system. That might be a little bit longer term in our plans, um, but we're, we're hoping to beef that up as well. Yeah, you've done a little bit of the uh, big reveal. Uh, I don't think oh. anybody has heard about the Las Vegas plan so far, which is great. Okay. It's a good time to do that. But you're right. The I know David and the team, and we'll talk to David here in a second, but you've been working on how can we get that education faster, uh, keeping the program intact. Uh, I know that it's a huge community and the golds and the diamonds and all of that going forward. They don't want to lose what we've created but how do we improve on it is what you're doing with that. And I think the idea with that is great, but yes, the for the listeners to understand, it really is a week long program of education uh, right now targeted for this midsummer in Vegas. So everybody can get a big jump start on their CTSM program. Um, how are you addressing the, what we're hearing is more and more 40% or almost 50% is new to the industry. 
What are you saying to them about the CTSM program and why should they get involved? Well, the, the CTSM program is really strong in providing that fine foundational um, information that they're going to need to be successful in their roles. So um, coming to the program, they get to learn about trade show basics, uh, logistical planning, and then even get into more of measurement and training the booth staff on how to successfully ex execute their trade show presence. And I know that there, a big part of what I'm hearing through the CTSM uh, participants is community. And I know that you're working on some areas too to continue to develop community. Maybe nothing you can share today, but I'm I'm assuming that's still a big priority for you, correct? Uh, definitely. And then even at the Exhibitor Live event coming up in Nashville in February, we're having a CTSM reception on the Sunday evening. And we decided to also add on a dinner with peers opportunity that people can sign up to go out to dinner with smaller groups. So that can help build that community. And in future sessions and content, we're really going to start stressing more of that opportunity to get to know your fellow um, participants in the program within the sessions, as well as some other activities when you come to those programs. Because it's not just the speakers that our participants can learn from, it's, it's one another and sharing those wins and even challenges. No, that's what I've seen. I really enjoyed watching them have those conversations and be a part of some of the diamond receptions and things where they get together and have some of that. So it's really a strong community and it's great to be a part of it. Definitely. All right, David, you've been with us a while now. We've seen how things have started to go and develop to, you know, and we want to see what's going on to this point, what things uh, that you feel are we can update the group on today, both for Exhibitor Group and the CTSM, the magazine, all aspects of Exhibitor, both long and short term. So what a, would it give us some of the updates, David? Well, thank you, Mark. And first of all, uh, it was June 1st last year at Exhibitions Day in Washington, D.C. when Mr. Johnson tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, I need to talk to you for like 30 minutes. So I said, oh, great. Nice to see you again. How's it going? I knew you know, we had met uh, the December before at Expo Expo. And so Mark and I sat down and I think we had a cup of soup. And uh, first thing he said is, uh, at the end of your contract at IE, will you come work with me? Because I really, and I go, wow, we weren't even sitting for 10 minutes and he was all over that. <laughs> hey, Mark, you must come from sales. <laughs> So um, thank you. I've been blessed to be on board uh, four months now. And once again, I'd be remiss to not uh, join Mark in thanking Dee Silfies for her incredible 25, 28 year, uh, wonderful uh, development of the CTSM program, all of the great education that happens at uh, Exhibitor Live and certainly E-Tracks and, and Fast Tracks. And even more thrilled that when I called Monica, she did remember me after a few years and we were uh, able to connect. And then Mark uh, had the opportunity uh, to have dinner with her. And she is now, I think, uh, finishing up her third month. So as Monica said, Mark, she is going to continue the great legacy work of D Silfies and that team, uh, Randy Aker and Lee Knight, because uh, we believe in certification. I happen to have a couple of them myself and uh, we're making great progress. So uh, I had the opportunity uh, as the exhibitor group uh, brought many good legacy ladies and gentlemen from the previous staff. And I've had the opportunity to build a dream team. And that dream team is certainly centered around Monica as our uh, education and learning and CTSM professional. Stephanie Gibbs uh, uh, was quote unquote stolen from uh, the parent company from Star after a dozen years. And she's now our director of events and she is outstanding. She has a checklist for Exhibitor Live that parallels anything Monica and I ever experienced on our MPI and in other days. So, and then Lauren, Lauren Johnson is our director of sales and marketing, a real rock star that Mark uh, brought in, uh, what about 15 months ago now, I believe. and. She is uh, doing a great job. We're, we're um, uh, really close to reaching our aggressive, I'll say Mark, aggressive budget for booth sales, uh, sponsorship sales and attendance. And she uh, is uh, helping us do that good work. And 
The addition to the uh, to the uh, dream team is uh, Kim Gisler. Many of you may know uh, 17 years with HP as an event marketing professional. And uh, I believe it was about 12 years running uh, SEMA, the Corporate Event Marketing Association, when um, she sent me a text saying, hey, I, I think you might want to hire me. I'm ready to go back to work. So there we go. Uh, the dream team is in place, uh, really focusing on uh, live, which is happening in three weeks, as Mr. Morrison pointed out. In longer term, supporting all the education, all of the communities we're building, the award-winning magazine will and can get better, and it will get better, working on, on enhancing the quality circulation. We actually got a uh, an email the other day from um, a couple of countries outside the United States that want us to help them with exhibitor training and having access to the magazine online and all of those wonderful opportunities. So slowly and methodically, uh, Mark and I have and our dream team have the goal of of not taking our eyeballs off of the United States and the incredible industry that we enjoy servicing and, and, and facilitating, but maybe some slow global growth because at least 25 to 30 percent of the attendees and exhibitors at shows mark in the United States are out side of the United States coming in as exhibitors and or attendees. So that was the short and sweet of it. Not necessarily short, but definitely sweet. No, you've got a lot of initiatives that you're working on and you and the team have been doing an awful lot in the last uh, several months with what we've tried to accomplish. And I know you're working short term for live this year and everything we've got going and long term. So we've got a few things that we're looking out for there. One of the big things that people are asking about is, you know, are we going back to Vegas? Uh, Monica already talked to us a little bit about how we're going back to Vegas. Uh, we will, <laughs> I guess, a week-long education program for those of us who still like Vegas and are working with it. But any announcements on other cities going forward? Or are you waiting to live to tell everybody where live is going to be in 25 and beyond? Well, I'm not going to do a reveal on this show today, but... Uh, yeah. At the opening reception on Monday night in Nashville, um, I will be talking about uh, the three cities that we've uh, signed contracts for, for 25, 26, and 27. So you have to be there in person. And I look forward to watching everybody smile when they hear about the great destinations that my team and I have chosen with incredible support from the convention centers and the convention bureaus of those wonderful cities. So stay tuned. I can't reveal yet, uh, but... Uh, you'll find out shortly in about three weeks. Well, and I know there's a couple other big surprises that uh, you will be revealing there also. Some other work on the community that we're doing with other industries and associations and professionals. So that's coming. Um, in addition to that, obviously all the great work that you continue to do. You guys did a great job with the editorial team earlier this year on our conference for the year. So there's some announcements that'll be kind of fun going on there with it. Um, but Give it some highlights. What should the attendees expect who are coming or those who are on the fence? What's the last words that you have for it that why they should come? What's the big uh, takeaway? What are they going to see different this year? I know it's still a transition year and we're moving on to 25 being big changes. But with the we've done it the old way in the back rear of your mirror. What's new? What's going to be coming different? And give us a little teaser and why those should everybody should come. Well, as Monica said, uh, if those of you who are engaged or starting to get engaged to join the 3,500 CTSM candidates that are in the program or have graduated to the diamond level, come in Sunday afternoon and come to the CTSM reception. On Monday, we're going to we're bringing back the executive roundtable, which is uh, 35 to 40 ladies and gentlemen at a C level, because we've heard Mark all along that what about me? I've been in the industry 20, 30 years. You know, CTSM is great. I'm sending five of my staff, seven of my staff. But what's in it for me? I still want to be educated. Of course, I'm going to walk the two-day show floor, and I'm going to go to the receptions for sure. So we've got that invitation only, and it's almost sold out, and we're three weeks out. I only have about four or five slots left. Um, obviously, the opening reception will be fantastic with kind of a quick state of the exhibitor group uh, um, visit from myself and I think Monica has 
and the team have given me no more than five or seven minutes. They'll pull the plug on me because uh, I have, a, I have a, a, a propensity to chat along. The closing reception is going to be very different, Mark. We've always celebrated CTSM graduates at the front end. We're going to do that as well at the dinner. But we're going to have a really big, big, fun Wednesday night closing reception, awards reception, where we will honor and congratulate the CTSM folks who have made progress in their programs and all of the exhibit awards programs that we will finish Wednesday afternoon in our grading process which has also been improved, Mark, to make sure that we recognize the best of the best from the show that will have taken place Tuesday and Wednesday. And I'll leave you with this. Get your registrations in because I found out this morning we are at a double digit pace growth compared to 2023. The numbers are looking good. We will definitely exceed 23 numbers. And if all goes well, and we all know in the late, um, uh, registration push of all our trade shows and business events that we're looking forward to to really filling the halls in Nashville in three weeks. So register quickly, exhibitoronline.com. That's good, David. And I appreciate too that one of the things we didn't talk about is you've done an awful lot of outreach to some of the major shows to reach out to them and get them in part of this community. So I know more of that is coming with it, but uh, that's what's for our uh, exhibitors and suppliers. You've got a whole new audience coming and this is why a reason they can come. The other point you mentioned was the award ceremony and then celebrating the CTSMers, the, the graduates with it. Th that used to be separate and we need to make sure everybody realizes we want them at both. We want the suppliers and the exhibitors to see who the graduates are, to celebrate that with them. Some of them are their customers or prospects. And then the other part, we want the CTSM students and participants in that to actually see the awards, see who's winning the awards, what's the best of on the show floor and stuff. So it's neat that you're bringing it together and just reminding everybody to, to attend that when they can, because they're all welcome to it. Yeah, and Mark, I was uh, remiss in mentioning um, that given my very wonderful history at IE and in the, in, in the industry for 40 plus years, I've had the, the green light from you and, and um, our staff to uh, reach out and be more collaborative. The exhibitor group is a very critical portion of the exhibitions and business events world. I always refer to it as uh, the exhibitors uh, the, our industry has four legs. The exhibitors are one of those legs, attendees, suppliers, and certainly show organizers and business event owners and organizers. Without a strong exhibitor base, the whole ecosystem will not be as successful. So we have, and, and I'm going to probably miss one or two, but we have EACA, we have ESCA, we have EDPA, we have MPI, we have um, um UFI, we have CISO, we have all the organizations invited to join us, Mark, and we will have an association pavilion on the, in the side of the square on the trade show floor for members of any of these organizations, because exhibitor groups are not a membership association, but my goodness, we're acting like one because we're building communities, we're building commerce, and we're supporting education. So I uh, we look forward to inviting more than ever all of our industry association colleagues to the show. Well, that's been a great part of it. And uh, yes, that was one of our initiatives when we took on the project. And you've been fabulous at it, David. You're perfect for it. And thank you for accepting that bowl of soup in June and <laughs> joining the team. And Monica, it's always a pleasure chatting with you. And I'm really looking forward to the program going forward and all your expertise and your leadership in that area. So thanks for your time today and look forward to seeing you guys in a couple of weeks in Nashville. Our pleasure. It's a great discussion with both Monica and David, and we appreciate you listening in. Mark and I will come back and wrap things up for this week after this. Are you searching for trade show and event products and services? Find it on Exhibitor Exchange is your complete buyer's guide to trade show exhibiting and events, featuring the trade show industry's top exhibit and display providers. Find it on Exhibitor Exchange is the industry's best shopping and commerce resource for buyers and sellers of exhibit and event products and services. 
reaching 20,000 exhibit and event buyers in every print issue of Exhibitor Magazine and 140,000 exhibit and event buyers online each year. Search the listings or list your company today. Learn more at ExhibitorOnline.com slash find it. Mike, that was a great conversation. I really enjoyed David and uh, Monica as I've been able to work closely with them on that. And as we said, uh, the CTSM program, we're so committed to it and so appreciative of Dee and the, the predecessors and what they've created in a community and the education format that's there. The, again, back to that, I will take a little bit in the fact that I just could not let that go away uh, when Lee was visionary when he created it, but where he got to the end of it, he was going to close the doors and move on. And that was just going to be too devastating to our industry. But I love what the team is putting together. Uh, I think it was great. Now, Monica did give a little bit of a, a reveal away, as we heard in the interview. Uh, we are moving away from our fast tracks that are multiple across the country. We thought at one point that it was regional, so people in those areas could attend those smaller classes. Uh, we've heard that they love the community and the smaller group in that area, not always wanting to come to the big show and seeing there. They like the intimacy with it, but they're trying to get more of their education done. And they just they'll go wherever the classes are for their agenda that they need to get their certification. So we are we are putting together the final phases and we will talk about it and announce the actual uh, location and dates uh, at Exhibitor Live here in Nashville. But we are going to do an education week, and it'll be a week-long session. Uh, you can come in for any part of it, and you'll see some of the options that go with it. But it will be in Vegas this summer, uh, and we're excited to see everybody going forward with that. Yeah, you'll definitely want to, if you have CTSM desires to, to come in for a full week and catch up on all of your certification, that's a week you'll definitely want to pay attention to and get on your calendar quickly. Uh, we, we don't know the location yet. As you said, they're, they're doing site visits and everything at this point, but uh, hopefully by Exhibitor Live, we'll be able to share that. One of the takeaways from that interview I thought was interesting, and I'd heard it before, but I just never really made, uh, it never made an impact until David said it, and that's that 50% of the uh, people who have signed up are new to the industry. And um, mm -hmm. you know, I guess we've been hearing that a lot. And just I've seen the same people, same faces over and over again. You just never, and you see a few new people, but that's a big percentage point of, of of people who are coming to the show who are brand new to the industry. Don't you think? Yeah, and and we have we've heard that from a lot of the different trends and findings and the research that we've done along with some of the others in the industry. And it does. It makes sense when you look at what happened with COVID and the amount of retirements, early retirements that took place because of some of the things that were happening. Um, it's a great opportunity for our whole industry now to re-educate, reconnect, create a whole new community from it. So the exhibitors, suppliers that are coming, I think they've got a huge opportunity to really show up well for these new attendees. Um, and yeah, some of the other additional uh, updates, the enrollment in the CTSM, as we talked about, is really off the charts and we want to make sure that everybody comes and joins the community event there's a networking reception on sunday at 4 30 in the canal foyer so that's one of the first events we want everybody to put down on their calendar come to the networking reception this is for ctsm um, and marketers and it's also for the suppliers everybody's invited to it okay the other thing we've done it before but we want to highlight if you need a new headshot, especially for all these new people coming in, we're trying to accommodate them and increase their professional status in the industry. Uh, we will have something at the square on Tuesday and or Wednesday for a free headshot. So make sure you put that on your calendar and uh, find time to look at doing that. We're also creating a uh, career advice area. So stop by the Career Center. It's an Exhibit 554 and you can chat with Searchwide Global, they're one of our career advisors that are working for it, and they'll help you with the, uh, you know, executive look, if it's an executive looking for the next opportunity, a coordinator wanting to revamp their LinkedIn profile, any advice that we can really help people as they start to build or take the next step in their career. So we're excited about some of the things that we're doing to address the industry and these people coming in, some of them brand new, 50% as we're hearing, but others that are just looking to make that next step. So some exciting new stuff that we want to highlight as you're getting ready for the, attending the show. I immediately wrote down in my notes headshots because uh, 
with a face for podcast audio, I, I need help with that. Will they help with the uh, makeup and all of that with that as well? Or are they just going to take the shot? That's the question. I think they're just going to take the shot. But if we need to, we can take care of you from that, Mike. And I'm sure there's people that will help you with that. But, yeah, uh, I want to do something that adds like 40 years of worth of hair back on, you know, that I've lost over the time. So. Yeah, no, Mike, I think uh, we'll keep talking each week going up some of these little highlights, exactly what's happening in the booth and timing with it. Uh, give everybody a little chance as we develop it to make the best use of their time while they're there. Uh, as we see, we've got more of a condensed version on the show floor, but uh, the times are longer, so it should be a better time for people to actually meet and do business, plus the classes. Uh, back to the week-long thing in Vegas. When you come to that event, uh, you should be able to get 70% of your CTSM program done. So between that and a live, uh, you should have your certification pretty much wrapped up. So we listened to, as Monica talked about it too, one of the responses last year, how do I get the program? I want to keep it intact, but I want to get it faster. And so we think we found some ways to do that for the group. That's awesome. As I said on the front end, time is really approaching. And uh, this was just the first session of three, because uh, we'll have three shows, this one plus two more before live hits. Next week, we're going to have the opportunity to, to bring back on the show. If you remember last year, we brought Charles Papa, senior writer from Exhibitor Magazine on to talk about just a lot of different things, how trade shows started and, and a whole lot of information because he's full of all of that and how it actually related to the World Fair. I remember that discussion that we had. So I'm sure he's going to bring a lot of that wisdom with him and uh, experience and, and updates about maybe his view, Mark, on what to expect this year at Exhibitor Live, because it is a different environment. It's a different location. It's a first time for that. And uh, there's a lot of firsts going into this one that he might be able to shed some light on, don't you think? Yeah, Charles is always a phenomenal uh, guest and a person to talk to if you get any time with him. His depth and uh, breadth of the industry and knowledge is phenomenal. So he's going to be a great presenter, and we'll talk more about what's going on and his role at Live and what the future looks like for the magazine and some of the other things we have in store. And remember, the Exhibitor Now podcast. Give us 30 minutes, and we'll give you everything you need to know now.